Now it's about race. A progressive group that backs Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez and others pushing a new crop of candidates to challenge incumbent Democrats who back that border bill. Doug Schoen, former pollster for President Clinton and a Fox News contributor. Chris Wilson, a Republican pollster and CEO at WPA Intelligence. Doug, I'm going to start sure. with you. This is your party. I know you backed away from your friend Hillary Clinton and didn't even vote for her because you thought the party was going too left. Uh, what's happening with Nancy Pelosi? And we can show the wall and everybody else. Right. Well, Nancy Pelosi has done, in my judgment, a masterful job keeping the Democratic caucus together. But the four of, uh, uh, representatives that you alluded to have a... We showed them. Yeah, a distinct agenda that goes well beyond the left. It's a so-called progressive agenda. She said they have limited um, uh, impact, but candidly... We talk about it a lot here at Fox. It was on another network Sunday show. So they have influence beyond their numbers. Yeah, but they numbers. still only get four votes. And you say that there is history to be learned, and Republicans might be able to work this and learn from. Well, I, I think it was only a matter of time before the progressive left that is represented by these four representatives started demanding that their leadership move to fit their views. And their voices, oh, even though they are just four people, are amplified through their use of social media. But it also turns out that your ability, that adapting or allowing for those people who are on the extreme left to play a dominant role in your caucus, even if that role is only on in representation role on social media is going to push the caucus or at least the image of that caucus too far to the left. And you and say that your party has seen this before. Well, they have. I think what uh, Nancy Pelosi saw that John Boehner didn't handle the uh, the sort of revolt by the Freedom Caucus, which was a lot more people, but all that well, and it cost him a speakership. Now, uh, whenever. Then you had Paul Ryan come in, and he handled it much better. And so I think that's why he was able to stay, stay speaker until the end of his term. All right, I want to move to this. New polling shows President Trump tied in a hypothetical 2020 matchup against an unnamed opponent who respondents, quote, regard as a socialist. Boy, I tell you, some of these polls, I, I mean, now we're, do, are you watching this early? Uh, you know, let me start. I am frustrated by the fact that after the 2016 polling that we are still representing the electorate by doing national polls. It is irrelevant. And if they really, if somebody wanted to do a solid representation of what's going to determine the election, they should be doing the 10 Trump states. And that would be far more representative, whether you're polling against a socialist or Joe Biden or anybody else for that matter. Doug? Yeah, my take is the Democratic Party being called a socialist, whether it be in those 10 states, Chris, or nationally, is only going to hurt the party, which is why the four aforementioned representatives, particularly AOC, are really a very, very serious problem for my party. Because if Chris and the Republicans brand the Democrats as socialists, we will only be hurt. So it's interesting you say that because, you know, when you were looking at matchups and another poll just a month or so ago, the president was behind six points or so, uh, in some cases greater. But when you put a socialist up there, it changes the, the math. And, and look, the president's numbers are moving up. The Democrats, by dint of the fighting between Biden and Kamala Harris and others, it only hurts the party vis-a-vis -vis the president. All right. We got breaking news, gentlemen. Thank you.